Every racer thinks in pictures. Sometimes it's images of missed opportunities, mistakes, or losses. In better times, it's a mental video of future success. But even with unfaltering self-belief, only the most self-assured of athletes would visualize themselves here. The last stage of the last race. The entire Enduro World Series championship at stake. At no time in the history of this sport has it ever been more important than right now to keep your head in the game. The route towards this exact moment in history began 600 kilometers and seven years east of where we find ourselves today. The birth of a sport. On Dala 2013, it certainly feels like a lifetime ago. It was the unknown. You'd look at uh, the distances that you were gonna have to cover and nobody trained for that. I remember just looking at the course map and thinking like, oh my God, how am I gonna finish this? How am I gonna carry enough food, enough water? I've never ridden my bike for that long. Either you were a downhiller or you were an XC rider. Enduro was kind of bred from like this mindset of the love of riding and like adventuring and expanding kind of the world of mountain biking. It's a new sport that wasn't really committed to a certain set of ground rules or styles. Didn't really know what I was doing. I had a backpack. I had a spare helmet on my backpack, which now is crazy to think that we were racing stages with a helmet on our back. Now you're running specific trail helmets that are full face, that are lighter, they're breathing better. And a lot of people don't run backpacks anymore. Now we really have some bikes that have been developed for this specific discipline. Durability has definitely skyrocketed in the last few years. It's pretty amazing what our bikes can go through. There are many downhill bikes. You're running downhill casing on these, you know, six to seven inch travel machines. We basically set them up so they will not break, no matter what we throw at them. You know, although it's been seven years, the sport is still finding its feet. I think there's really a little more attention going into quality over quantity. I think the general consensus this year is that things are a lot more fun and still just as competitive. I'm just trying to get to the bar. Now it's really grown into this full-blown race series, and I think you see it in like how serious everyone is. But the funny thing is that this chill vibe like still remains, and I think that's what makes it a really cool balance. You know, I'm sure somewhere along the line it's going to find that balance of what is the, the ultimate test of endurance, but then again, the high-end speed and that high-end short intensity kind of racing. Welcome to Zermatt, the final round of 2019 EWS. Underneath the Matterhorn. The final stage of the season here in Switzerland will be raced on a trail appropriately named Overtime. 4.8 kilometers and 776 meters of elevation loss. Combining wide open alpine style riding with forested flow. But first are four stages filled with limitless options for creativity and chaos. Compared to riding here, it's almost like a different sport. You know, it's, the trails are so, so different and there's so many different techniques needed to ride it well. Usually a lot of switchbacks and um, definitely a little bit harder to negotiate on a mountain bike for sure. Trails where we live are simply hiking trails. Like most of the time, they are not built especially for bikes. We get used to this awkward kind of turns, everything where you could get on a hiking trail. Florian is probably one of the best guys I've ever seen go around a switchback. He does like a super smooth pivot to almost like a power wheelie out, and you're like, damn.
going into this week, I really thought that uh, Sam would have that mantle edge over Flo, but then uh, seeing the terrain here, I think Flo might have uh, the slight advantage on this one. You've seen a lot of high and lows this season. Like, uh, no one has been very solidly consistent over the year. Sam having a not so good start of the season when Florian was very solid at the beginning. Then Florian had a bit of a fall down in the North American round where obviously Sam took the opportunity to get back on points. And all this uh, come into today where mentally it's gonna be a massive commitment. Yeah, it's kind of weird, you know, looking on and doing well the past couple races because, like, you don't want to get in the way of, you know, their title chase, but it's like, you know, you got to race your race. Obviously, Sam has to be on the front of Florian to be able to win. If Sam is winning and no one wins the Queen stage, Florian has to be second. If Florian is only third, Sam's going to actually win the overhaul. It's going to be tight racing and no 60 point is nothing. <laughs> Drop into stage one and straight away you're on the pedals, breathing hard. I think I was close to Sam at the top, but at the bottom he was really fast. Not really so bad too for the title, I've got to put a bit more into it, so going to try and stay relaxed throughout the day and do my best. I love the detail of a body, look under the bunny. I ain't sorry about spending all this money. Speeding on the fast lane, always on a hurry. Eyes of a tiger, I don't fear nobody. I hear the cops coming. Tough day, quite physical, even though we were using a bit of lift. You know, I think the attitude just playing a big role uh, into the race. Tough race, but a good race. Like it's a proper enduro, and it's something that I've been looking for for quite a while. So it's, it's cool to see it back again. Florian, he has to really keep fighting because you never know what could happen. It could go down to the very final stage. The race can go throughout the day, and the, the win of a queen stage could change it all. Three continents, eight races, 49 stages of racing, two racers, now separated by just the very slimmest of margins. It's all a matter if uh, Flo is going to be capable to take all his skills and talent right to the top mentally on a day like this. Fuck, don't give up. That's the biggest lesson of Endero. Don't give up. <laughs> that was good racing. <laughs> That's why we love it. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Flo didn't fall under pressure, which, which, which for him is, uh, is great. It's great. The winner of today is Competition among the women field has really increased. Like the times are super tight this season. It's just proving that we are evolving and we try to make it a better sport for women. Some people on pink bike are like, how does Isa ride her bike fast? Like, she's so small. Like, just stop. <laughs> she rides faster than you. <laughs> I feel like I can keep going for a little while yet. And sort of always thought when, when I'm not having fun, I'll, I'll pack it in. So I don't think I'm ready to sort of step away from racing yet. No. 
My race was so mixed. Moments of brilliance that were really, really cool. I was really happy about that. And then it was just stupid mistakes. And yeah, it was a hard race to, to find the flow with. The result is not what I dream of, but it's solid. I'm not unhappy, I'm not overly happy. You can like mountain biking without ever having heard of Sam Hill or Isabeau Coudurier, but you can't be truly obsessed with it without some help from their kind. Everything I think that I hold value, like values in myself, people around me, things like that, I owe to mountain biking. You may never strap a number plate to the front of your bike, but it's competition that pushes the machines and the riders to new levels. I've always wanted to go a bit faster, get a bit fitter, get into this rhythm of pursuing the next goal, and it's just kind of like an addiction at the end of the day. The racetrack breeds the technology and the techniques that trickle down to the rest of us mere mortals in little drops of inspiration and enthusiasm. Riders like you and me, who exactly like the fastest riders on the planet, just love to ride bikes. When people ask me, yeah, am I into anything else, I'd love to have a really interesting answer, like astrology or something, but it's bikes. My world revolves around bikes, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest, because it's what I love. Hopefully, you know, every year we'll get more and more fans, more and more brands getting involved as well, you know, because that's all just going to boost the sport bigger and better. Thank you. Boom. Boom. So that. Boom. Done. Yeah. Cut. That's the end. We done. The season's over. Damn. The last interview. I got something in my eye. I know. It's like the green is lava and the ball doesn't want to be there. <laughs>